language is fixed chords. So are the chords of a language, the um, spelling, the structure, the way a thing is seen to be appropriately or the uh, expressed or the correct form of language as we perceive it, is it like a fixed system of codes that everyone needs to follow? Well, the answer is actually no. So it is argued that this concept of this system in a language is only an illusion. That is, we only think of uh, it as being static and there being a system in it. The reason is, or the evidence against it, the think of the Urdu that you speak of now, how different is it from the kind of Urdu that was being spoken at the time of, for instance, Ibn Insha. Or think of the kind of English that you speak now and how different it is from the language that was used in uh, Canterbury Tales, for instance, or uh, Milton's English, how different or similar it is. So language is not, uh, or the language codes are not fixed. They are fluid. They change over time. And how do they change? They change because uh, of the changing social practices. As the social world change, you need different vocabulary. You do sort of express what you want to. You also need a different type of way to address things and if uh, the social context changes you need to sort of also adjust your language codes accordingly and this exactly leads to change in languages. So what we are saying is that language codes are fluid that is, although at today's class you might check the copies of your children and put big question marks regarding uh, inappropriate use of language, well, that might be true in today's world, today's time, but over time the same thing might be uh, sort of like might change over time. For instance, this concept, I'm loving McDonald, I'm loving it, is grammatically incorrect if you look at um, uh, the grammar books. But over time, you have several other words which are using um, uh, this type of grammatical structures. So the structure of the language borrows from the previous experience. So you learn how to say things after you have experienced the consequences of that kind of discourse and based on that experience you see whether it is appropriate or inappropriate and you readjust the, the, the discourse that you uh, use. So our today's use of language or our languaging are actually sediments of previous usage and they are flexible to um, change. That means when we use a language, we try out what has been said before or the way it has been said before. Is it sort of like uh, appropriate? And you would know whether it is appropriate or not by the consequences of what you said. So did it perform the function that I wanted to perform? Did it have the kind of effect on the other person I wanted to have? If not, then you'll change your practice and you'll change your language code. So, it is argued that um, language codes are then flexible and what actually is there is languaging. That is discourses. How you use language or modify it to say what you want to say within a social practice. So if language is actually not a given rigid set of codes, but it is actually a social practice, then the concept of languaging Penny Cook argues is more relevant than anything else. And this is how uh, he argues that we need to look at uh, uh, languaging 
uh, practices rather than language. So he would say that this concept of dialects, pigeons, kiroles are not language types, but they are languaging practices. This is, these are the different ways in which you actually uh, use language. And this also includes the academic language or the academic languaging that takes place in schools.